Hi, I'm Chris, and welcome to the Starship Lightbreaker, a ship outfitted with the means to break the speed of light in every conceivable way. A few months ago, we did a video celebrating a hundred... a hundred subscribers, and in that video, we put a list of six ways we can think of to maybe possibly travel faster than the light, at least within the context of science fiction. So now we're ready for the second item on the list, wormholes. Portals between points in space and time, and maybe even between universes. But within the past hundred years, motivated by Einstein's theory of general relativity, portals have gone from the realm of fantasy and speculation to the realm of science. We call them wormholes, and there are several different types, some of which might actually be plausible within the real universe. To begin, we have the original model, the Einstein-Rosen bridge. This was the first type of wormhole to come out of general relativity, and it involves what happens when you approach the event horizon of a black hole. The event horizon is the point of no return, surrounding the singularity at the center. If we just plug the math into a regular space-time coordinate system, we get space and time bunching up and not really being able to make sense of what happens on the other side of the event horizon. So one possible answer to what happens at the surface of a black hole is that perhaps space just like turns around and then there's more space on the other side, another universe, another place in the same universe. On the side we see is a black hole. The other side would have an event horizon that nothing could go into called a white hole. So the thought was, maybe black holes are not one-way tickets to infinite compactification. Maybe you cross the event horizon of a black hole and find yourself in another universe or another place in our universe. This would, of course, be one way because you have a black hole on one side and a white hole on the other side and you can't go backward through either of these. The problem with an Einstein-Rosen bridge is it kind of like saying, we can't see what's on the other side of the horizon of the ocean, so let's suppose if a ship sails over that horizon, then they end up sailing back on an upside down ocean. It's also like saying, what happens if we go north of the North Pole? A better way to find out what happens inside of a black hole is to use a Penrose diagram. It's a space-time diagram that distorts the lines of space and time but keeps light traveling at 45 degree angles. If we do this, then we find out there actually is an inside to the black hole where space and time are inverted. And the singularity is not a point in space, it's a moment in time. Now let's see what happens when we append that other supposed space time on the other side of the white hole to the Penrose diagram. We find that it actually does work mathematically, but in order to get there, you have to fly your ship faster than light into the black hole. So Einstein-Rosen bridges are not going to be the tool that we use to go faster than light. Good news for would-be intergalactic space travelers, though, because the Einstein-Rosen bridge is not the only type of wormhole possible. There is also the Kerr wormhole, which has to do with rotating black holes. Everything in space has some angular momentum. It is spinning at some speed. Now, theoretically, it could be possible for something to have no spin exactly, but that is all but impossible because exactly zero is less than 0.0000000000000001. So in real life, everything has some spin, has some angular momentum. And angular momentum is conserved, which means as a star collapses and becomes a black hole, it spins faster. This means that if the matter were to collapse to an infinitesimally small point, it would have to be rotating at infinite speed. And that's impossible because the speed of light is the limit. So what happens is instead of collapsing to a point, it collapses to a ring, which spins at the speed of light. This is called a ring singularity, and I refuse to call it a ringularity because that's dumb! The faster an object is spinning and the more angular momentum it has, the larger that ring is going to be. 
So it's possible that it's large enough that you could fly a ship through it. And going through the ring singularity could put you in a white hole being spit out somewhere else in the universe, or in a different universe. Thus, a Kerr black hole could be used as a wormhole if you come at it from the pole and fly through the ring singularity. There's also a curious possibility involving Kerr black holes. See, the faster it spins, the larger the radius of the ring singularity is. And if its angular momentum is high enough, that ring is larger than the event horizon, which means there's no matter inside the event horizon, which means the event horizon goes away, and all we have is a ring singularity floating in space. A naked singularity, without an event horizon, without a point of no return. It is thought that naked singularities can't exist based on something called the weak cosmic censorship hypothesis, which says Naked singularities can't exist. Why not? Well, I did some research, and it seems like the only reason is because physicists don't like the idea of there being naked singularities. So a rotating black hole might be usable as a wormhole if we go through the ring singularity, and if we find a naked singularity, then that could be used as a wormhole too. But the Einstein-Rosen bridge and the Kerr wormhole both involve intense amounts of gravity, comparable with black holes. What if we want a doorway or a bubble that we can fly into and out of both ways without the problem of massive amounts of gravity? Let me introduce the Morris Thorne wormhole, the type of wormhole that we see in the movie Interstellar, a bubble in space that you can fly into and out of and go both ways, and it's just a tunnel through space-time, a shortcut to another part of the universe. Morris Thorne wormholes are our best choice for taking trips across the galaxy, between galaxies, and between universes. They just have one teensy problem. They need exotic matter, which is negative energy or imaginary mass, in order to keep them open. There's also the problem that we have no idea how a Morris Thorne wormhole could form. It's valid as a solution to the equations of general relativity, but that doesn't mean it exists or that it can necessarily be created. Also, there is the matter of wormholes being usable for time travel. This is probably the easiest way to conceptualize FTL being used for time travel, as we can simply say the ends of the wormhole are out of sync in time. But even if the ends are in sync, we could turn that wormhole into a time machine like this. Take one side of the wormhole and put it on a ship that flies around near the speed of light, and have the other end of the wormhole sitting still. Because of special relativity, time is passing more slowly on the ship that flies around and around and around. That is, on the path that goes from one end of the wormhole looking out through space to the ship. However, through the wormhole, the ends are not moving relative to each other which means on the path through the wormhole, time is in sync. Let me say that again. On the path outside the wormhole, time is passing at different rates. But on the path through the wormhole, time is passing at the same rate. What this means is that when the ship flying around in circles slows down and comes back to the ground, the two ends of the wormhole will be out of sync in time you'd be able to look through one side of the wormhole and see people on the other side a week ago, or a month ago, or however long. And if you walk through that wormhole, you walk back in time, that amount of time. Combining wormholes with special relativity gives you a time portal where you can just step through to another time. Speaking of faster than light and time travel, I recently uploaded a video to the Veritasium contest. So if it's before August 31st, 2021, head over there and give it a like to nominate it for the contest. And that is wormholes. Shortcuts, short paths between vast distances of space and time, and even alternate universes. Special thanks to our new patrons. Thank you very much for supporting this show. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.